Hello, I'm Katrina from the Palm Beach County Library System, and I'm here to save you from the agony of boredom. After binging through your favorite shows, mindlessly scrolling through your feed, and burning through your TV red pile, join us for That's Lit. In each episode, we'll read a chapter of a teen book, sort of like a teaser preview. And if you're eager for more, you can find it on Cloud Library or Hoopla by following the link below. If you don't have a library card, no worries. Grab your adult and head to the nearest Palm Beach County Library branch to sign up and get one in seconds. Now that's lit. When Dimple Met Rishi was written by Sandhya Menon and published by Simon Pulse. This award-winning teen romance is the perfect choice for fans of My So-Called Bollywood Life by Nisha Sharma, 29 Dates by Melissa De La Cruz, and Frankly in Love by David Yoon. This book is available on Hoopla as an e-audiobook and as an e-book and an e-audiobook from the Cloud Library Digital Collection. And now, When Dimple Met Rishi. Chapter 1. Dimple. Dimple couldn't stop smiling. It was like two invisible puppeteers standing stage left and stage right were yanking on strings to lift up the corners of her mouth. Okay, or maybe something less creepy. The point was, the urge to grin felt irresistible. Dimple clicked on the email again and read it. Stanford. She was going to Stanford. Even though the acceptance letter had come in the mail weeks ago, she hadn't allowed herself to really fully believe it until her student login details had come via email. She'd thought that, at the last minute, Papa would have second thoughts and renege on the deposit, or that Mama would call and tell them Dimple had changed her mind. And if you didn't think Mama would do something like that, you have never met her. But no, it had all actually worked out. Everything was settled. She was officially enrolled. Now, if only... Dimple clicked over to the other window she had open, her smile fading just a tad. InsomniaCon 2017, a fabulous opportunity for rising high school seniors or recent grads. Come learn the basics of web development on the sunny SFSU campus this summer. Just shut up and take my money, Dimple thought. But it wasn't that easy. It would be an incredible opportunity. This was true. She'd have a leg up on everyone else when she started Stanford in the fall. And think of the contacts she'd make. Some of the biggest names in web development had gone through InsomniaCon. Jenny Lint, for instance. The woman was a genius. She'd basically designed and coded the billion-dollar meeting space app and website from the ground up. It made Dimple salivate just to think of sitting through the same classes, participating in the same activities, walking the same campus as she had. But she didn't know if she could push her luck with the parental unit. The summer program cost a thousand dollars. And while Papa and Mama were solidly middle class, they weren't exactly flush. Not to mention she'd already stretched her luck about as far as it could go, she was sure, by asking nay, haranguing them, to let her go to Stanford. She was sure the only reason they had agreed was because they were secretly hoping she'd meet the IIH of her, no, their, dreams at the prestigious school. IIH, for the uninitiated, stood for Ideal Indian Husband. Ugh. Just thinking about it made her want to banshee scream into a pillow. Mama sounded screechy and frantic, as usual. When Dimple was younger, she'd go running downstairs, heart pounding every single time, terrified something awful had happened. And every single time, Mama would be doing something mundane like rummaging in the kitchen cupboard, greeting her casually with, Have you seen my saffron? Mama never understood why it made Dimple so livid. Just a minute, Mama! she shouted back knowing full well it would be more than a minute. Dimple now knew better than to rush when she heard her mama call. They'd arrived at an uneasy truce. 
Mama didn't have to modulate her tone if Dimple didn't have to drop everything and rush to her aid for saffron emergencies. She clicked through the photo gallery on the Insomnia Con website for another five minutes, sighing at the building's giant glass and chrome structure, at the tech nerds grouped together in inviting clusters, at the pictures of previous jubilant winners of the legendary talent contest that gave them extra seed money for their apps or websites. Dimple would kill to be one of them one day. Participants of InsomniaCon were tasked to come up with a concept for the most groundbreaking app they could conceive during their month and a half at the SFSU campus. Although no one could actually code an entire app in that time frame, The idea was to get as close as possible by the judging round. There were rumors that this year, the winners would get the chance to have their concept critiqued by Jenny Lint herself. Now that would be epic. Dimple said a little prayer that she'd win a thousand dollar lottery, turned off her monitor, adjusted her ratty gray salwar kameez, and made her way downstairs. Papa was saying, didn't she mention this? Dimple stopped, ears perked. Were they talking about her? She strained to hear more, but Mama pitched her voice too low, and Dimple couldn't make out anything else. Of course, when she actually wanted to listen, Mama decided to be quiet and reserved. Sighing, she walked into the living room. Was it her imagination, or did her parents look a little flushed? Almost guilty? She raised her eyebrows. Mama? Papa? Did you need something? Dimple, tell me again about... Oh. The guilty look disappeared as Mama pursed her magenta lipstick mouth, taking Dimple's appearance in. Wearing specs? She pointed to Dimple's glasses, perched on the end of her nose, like usual. Mama's eyes roamed, squinting with disapproval at Dimple's unruly black curly hair, which she refused to let grow past her shoulders, her face so completely unadorned with makeup, and sadly, in spite of Mama's optimistic naming, nary a Dimple in sight. She should be thankful I brushed my teeth this morning, Dimple thought, but Mama would never understand Dimple's aversion to makeup and fashion. Every other week, one of the aunties from Indian Association came over to help Mama dye her roots black while Papa was at work. He was under the impression that she still had her youthful color. Where are your contacts? And remember when I showed you how to do Kajal? Kajal was the potted eyeliner that was hugely popular in Mama's youth, a trend which she apparently hadn't noticed had died away sometime in the 70s. Vividly, Dimple muttered trying to tamp down the annoyance in her voice. From beside Mama, Papa, ever the peacemaker, was making a surreptitious, please let it go, face. I just graduated three days ago, Mama. Can't I have this week to relax and be lazy? Papa's face now resembled a roti that had been left in the pan too long. Relax and be lazy? Mama thundered. Her glass bangles jangled in synchrony. Do you think you're going to find a husband by being lazy? Do you think for the past 22 years since marrying your father, I've had a minute to myself to be lazy? Of course not, Dimple thought, because you've been too busy hovering. She bit her tongue and sank down on the sofa, knowing that once Mama got started, she'd be at it for a while. It was better to let her talk until the words petered out, like those wind-up chattering teeth you could buy at the joke store. There were a million things she could say in acerbic response, of course, but Dimple still hadn't ruled out asking to enroll in InsomniaCon if the opportunity presented itself. It was in her best interest to hold back. No, I haven't, Mama continued. Lazy shouldn't be in a woman's vocabulary. Adjusting the violet dupatta on her gold and pink salwar kameez, Mama settled against the couch. She looked like the brilliant Indian flower Dimple knew she herself would never be. You know, Dimple, a grown daughter is a reflection of her mother. What do you think others in our community will think of me if they see you like this? 
She made a vague gesture at Dimple's person. Not that you aren't beautiful, Betty. You are, which is what makes it even more tragic. Dimple knew she shouldn't, but the flare of temper that overtook her made it all but impossible to stop the flood of words leaving her mouth. That is such a misogynistic view, Mama, she said, jumping up, pushing her glasses up on her nose. Papa was muttering something under his breath now. He might have been praying. Mama looked like she couldn't believe what she was hearing. Misogynistic? You call your own mother misogynistic? Mama darted an indignant look at Papa, who appeared to be extremely invested in a loose thread on his kurta. Turning back to Dimple, Mama snapped. This is what I'm worried about. You lose sight of the important things, Dimple. Looking nice, making an effort. These are the things girls value in our culture, not this. She made air quotes, which up until now, Dimple hadn't realized she knew how to use. Misogyny business. Dimple groaned and clutched her head feeling like that ancient pressure cooker Mama still used when she made Eadly cakes. She was sure that there was an actual chance she would explode. There was no way she and Mama were related. They may as well have been two entirely different species. Seriously? That's what you think I should be relegating my brain space to? Looking nice? Like... If I don't make the effort to look beautiful, my entire existence is nullified? Nothing else matters, not my intellect, not my personality, or my accomplishments. My hopes and dreams mean nothing if I'm not wearing eyeliner? Her voice had risen incrementally until it echoed off the high ceilings. Mama, caught up in the moment, stood to meet her glare. Hi, Ram, Dimple. It is not eyeliner. It is Kajal. Dimple's temper flashed, the heat tempered only slightly by the dampness of disappointment. This was an argument they'd had so many times. She and Mama could probably say each other's lines. It was like they were constantly speaking two different languages, each trying to convince the other in an alien lexicon. Why couldn't Mama make the smallest effort to understand where Dimple was coming from? Did she really think Dimple had nothing valuable to contribute beside her looks? The thought made Dimple's pulse skyrocket. She leaned forward, face flaming, ready to speak her mind about how she really felt. The doorbell chime echoed through the house, bringing them to a standstill. Dimple's heart still raced, but she felt all the million old arguments stall, unspoken behind her lips. Mama adjusted her dupata, which had begun to fall off during the argument, and took a deep breath. We have guests, she said demurely, patting her hair. I trust you will behave for them, Dimple. Papa looked at her with big, pleading eyes. Dimple managed a curt nod, thinking... Saved by the bell, Mama. You don't know how lucky you are. Thank you.